There are literally a million and one Android apps available on the Google Play Store. And it's not always the most popular apps that are the best apps. So sometimes it can be hard to find those hidden gems. The apps that offer something new, something different, or just that perfect piece of functionality you've always wanted. I'm Rob Wilson, you're watching c 4 Tech, and this is The Secret 7. Those gems you've never seen before, but you're going to love them. First up, let's present you with a problem. Android devices have three main volumes, media alarms and ringtones, that are system wide. That often means you have to adjust your volumes once you're inside an app. Now let me show you the solution. App volume control allows you to assign individual volume profiles to every single app on your device. Simply choose the app you want to add a profile to and then toggle the various volumes and what the volume level should be when the app is launched. As you can see you can choose from media, ringtone, alarm, notifications and system sounds and you can add another volume profile for when you exit the app if you choose not to return to the previous volume settings. Once you're happy with the volume profile, save it and exit the volume control app. Next, launch your intended app and you'll see a little notification at the top of your screen reminding you the volume has been adjusted. And when you exit the app, you'll get exactly the same message. Obviously, this takes a little time to set up, but once you have, you'll have complete control over your volume levels wherever you are. Okay, this next app you are going to love. Take notifications. They're a one-time thing. You read it, you swipe it away, and whoops, it's gone forever. Well, not anymore. There is an app called Notive Log that keeps all your notifications and lists them in a huge long list. Essentially, it's notification history, and it keeps everything you want, such as this very notification I just swiped away. This is indeed one of those apps you kind of think should be included as a stock feature. Additional features include the ability to delete notifications from this list or snooze them so that they ping back to your regular notification screen at a later time. You can, if you wish, exclude certain apps from the notif log if you don't want to keep them and set a limit on the maximum number of notifications it keeps at any given time. Yep, I knew you'd love this one. All right, on to my home screen. Not the prettiest I accept, but I like to keep my apps on one screen and all my widgets on the next screen. That means my widgets sometimes get ignored. So is there a better place to put them where you can easily access them? Well, we all know we can access the notification drawer and quick settings with a swipe down from the top of the screen. But what if we chop that functionality up? Say swipe down top left to get notifications, swipe down top right to get widgets. Well, here's your live demonstration, and the app you want is Snap Swipe Draw. It works in tandem with your notification drawer and allows you access to your widgets without backing out to your home screen. It's very simple to set up, requiring you to tap the plus button within the app to add widgets to your drawer. It's best used with wide widgets of four columns, as smaller ones don't quite look right when you swipe down from the top of the screen. But once in the drawer, whenever you swipe down from the top right of the screen, you've got widget access wherever you are. Now I'm not going to say this app is perfect just yet. It does have a few bugs and the free version only allows you to choose three widgets. But give it time and I can see this developing into an essential piece of functionality to add to your device. Next up is yet another list of apps which are going to give you complete control over a certain piece of functionality on your device. This time we're looking at Wake On Notifications, or WUN for short. This allows you to choose app by app which notifications actually wake your lock screen to show you the notification on screen. In this very singular example, I'm going to turn on Wake Notifications for Facebook Messenger. So when I lock my screen and a message pops in, my lock screen will turn on, just like the good old days. Like app volume control, this can take a wee while to set up but there are options to turn on and off everything all at once, and you also get downtime facilities and pocket detection, so the lock screen doesn't wake when you've got no chance of seeing what the notification is anyway. Now, when it comes to typing on your smartphone keyboard, it's not uncommon to use these same phrases day in, day out. So being able to quickly paste them in rather than type them out might be quite useful. Well, if you install a native clipboard and double tap in any text field, you can choose to paste in text that you use on a regular basis and save yourself a whole heap of time. 
You can long press on tiles to show you the content of your text or just tap the tile once to instantly paste that text into your field. And all these lines are created by you through the app by pressing the add button, giving the tile a title and then typing in your text. Once saved, all you need to do is double tap to bring up native clipboard and then plonk that text into your message. You can remove tiles you no longer want by swiping them away or keep important ones by long pressing on them to pin them to your native clipboard. As you might expect, this is a lifesaver for typing addicts. And as the text suggests, whilst I might look like him, I'm not Iron Robin. One thing we all use a lot of these days is data and Internet Speed Meter is one of those apps that will list in detail how much data you use and what type, whether it be mobile or Wi-Fi. You also get this list of what apps are consuming data, but that's not really why I'm telling you about this app. Its party piece is in its notifications. First of all, and probably the most useful notification, is the permanent data monitor that sits in your notification tray and spews out live data usage statistics. This means that every time you update Facebook, play an online game or download something, that monitor will be crunching the numbers. It moves so fast that you won't be able to track specific data usage, but it will give you a snapshot of roughly how much data has been used and how frequently. Now if you want to go for something a little more left field, you can instead choose one of the floating widgets. The first is one that sits in your status bar and you can drag it along that bar wherever you like. If you do this, you might just want to make sure it doesn't get in the way of anything else up there. Alternatively, you can transform it into a floating widget that sits on top of your screen and you can drag it anywhere you like. That, however, might be taking things just a little too far. Alright, pay attention folks, there's some science behind this one. Recent research suggests that exposure to blue light before sleep may distort your natural rhythm and cause inability to fall asleep. The cause of this is the photoreceptor in your eyes called melasp... Oh, I've had enough of this, blah blah blah. This is Twilight, an app that changes the colour temperature, intensity and dimness of your screen depending on the time of day to help you relax your eyes more at night in preparation for sleep. You can set the screen levels and the time of day when this kicks in manually but here's what happens over the course of a day in the space of 15 seconds. As the day draws to a close, your screen will become warmer and softer, eliminating the blue spectrum, and, so the science tells us, regain on average an hour of sleep per night that we lose to electronic screens. It's pretty much impossible to measure whether this will have a positive benefit on you as an individual user, but there's absolutely no harm in trying, and at least you can mess about with your screen colours to see if you like the warmer or cooler screen tones. And that is your lot for this one, folks. Seven hidden gems you can go to the Google Play Store, download, and instantly love. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to like it. And if you want more C4 eTech content, then subscribe right now. Our social media platforms are on screen right now, and it just leads me to say, enjoy the rest of your tech day. After a little bonus. And today's final bonus app isn't so much a hidden gem, but it is a way of finding hidden Wi-Fi spots. Take the following example. You're at a university campus and you need a Wi-Fi spot. Well, Wi-Fi free will show you where those Wi-Fi spots are. Starbucks is often a good bet and they usually offer open Wi-Fi with no passwords required. All well and good. But what about those Wi-Fi hotspots that aren't so obvious or password protected? Well, if someone has been kind enough to share that password through this app, that gives you plenty more options when it comes to finding Wi-Fi. Now to give you a sense of scale on just how big this app is. If I zoom out, there's probably a good 20 to 30 Wi-Fi hotspots within a 2 km radius. But when you go into city centres or any commercial districts, you'll find hundreds, if not thousands of Wi-Fi hotspots. This is a great app for getting passwords from small businesses like cafes that try to keep their Wi-Fi private for customers. Well, unfortunately for them, but fortunately for us, Wi-Fi free circumvents this. Now at last count, Wi-Fi free boasted 10 million hotspots worldwide, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's closer to double that figure now. Of course, this app isn't foolproof. It relies on users keeping Wi-Fi hotspot locations up to date with accurate information. And it's riddled with adverts that pop up every 5 to 10 taps of the screen. But that's a small price to pay when you're desperately in need of Wi-Fi.